Model Steam Engine's Top Tip Time, Part 56. In this episode of Top Tip Time, I'm working on a very old, horizontal model steam engine. Some parts are well made, and others less so. Does it run? Well, yes, it sort of runs. The engine is bolted to a piece of brass, and there's been no attempt to countersink the bolts, so it doesn't sit very level when it's running. Most of the external moving parts are a rattle fit, and I can't see it being much better when I start to look inside the cylinder. All will be revealed as I take the engine apart. It's a simple single cylinder engine fitted with a slide valve in the steam chest and a simple tubular type crosshead guide. When I look a bit closer at this engine I can see one or two refinements. It has a split big end which is adjustable. In this clip you can clearly see that it has a fish bellied eccentric rod. This is a very good idea to stop the rod bending when it's under pressure. I'm going to attempt to run this engine and the first thing I've done is oiled every part of it. I've also injected plenty of oil into the steam chest. I removed the massive nut on the end of it just to have a look how it was put together and I noticed some sealant and that's not required so here I'm wiping it off with a piece of cloth. I connect the air line and... Well, after a fashion, it runs. The owner of the engine said that it did a couple of turns and stopped and locked up, but I'm not finding that. I did, however, inject plenty of oil into the steam chest, so the cylinder's getting plenty of lubrication. I have a sneaking feeling that the cylinder was born dry. I'll try it again. It's a bit of a rattler and things are moving around, but at least it does run. Looking at the amount of play on some of the components, the big end for instance, really does need adjusting. This is not going to be a rebuild, I'm going to repair this engine, so you won't know that it's been repaired, I'm not going to polish it up, I'm not going to clean it, because this is the way it is. I'm not being lazy, but the patina, or patina, whatever you want to call it, is quite important on an engine of this age. However, externally it may look a bit rough. I'm going to work on the mechanical aspect of this engine from the inside. I'm going to start by removing the steam chest and having a look inside. And my small red plastic box is at the ready to accept all the parts that are take off the engine. When I look inside, I get quite a shock. There's a large spring and someone's attempted to soft solder this to the valve spindle and the slide valve. Not a good start, really. As with most subjects, it's a good idea if you know something about what you're playing with. I've been playing with steam engines, well, forever, most of my life. I've had a lot of experience working with steam engines, and I do fully understand how they work. This is not good. A standard bolt which drives the valve, I will replace that with a proper pin. The outer edges of a thread on a bolt are less than perfect as far as being a bearing is concerned. With the slide valve and the steam chest out of the way, I can have a look at the port face, and for its age it's not too bad, but it needs a bit of attention. The port face isn't worn as bad as I thought it would be. I'm just cleaning it up here with a piece of scotch Bright to have a closer look at it, and it's really not too bad. Before anyone gets confused, I'd just like to mention that the oil that you're seeing inside the steam chest on the slide valve and the port face of the cylinder is the oil that I applied before I ran the engine a few minutes ago. Using some 400 grit wet and dry sandpaper, in this clip I'm cleaning up the face of the slide valve. And it looks to me like the slide valve is made from a piece of steel. Maybe it isn't steel, but it looks like it and it's a bit rusty. I want to have a look at the condition of the gland packing. This is a stuffing gland on the steam chest. I've removed the nuts, and what I find inside is some extremely hard gland packing. That's been in there for many, many years. And as you can see, the engine has been run dry because the gland packing that I've just pulled out of the steam chest doesn't seem to have any oil on it anywhere. I remove the end cylinder cover to have a look at the piston. I need to remove the piston and it's held in place to the crosshead using one brass bolt. 
there's a matching flat on the piston rod, which is how it's held in place to the crosshead just by the pressure of this one bolt. A very simple principle, but it's worked fine for a lot of years. Once I removed the small bolt, I just slid the piston rod out of the crosshead. And here's the piston on the bench looking quite scored. The owner only sent me the engine because there is a boiler with it, but I don't want to work on that, it's made from steel. Problem is, he only runs it on compressed air now. A small pot boiler supplying low pressure saturated steam would probably just about supply sufficient lubrication because the water becomes the lubricant. But obviously running the engine on compressed air, all the engine's going to get is air. Discounting the amount of oil I pumped into the engine when I removed the soft packings from the piston, they were quite soft and really smelt of very old oil. But the combination of the graphite on the graphited yarn which you use for packings and the old oil saved the cylinder, I think. Basically, the bearings need adjusting. The port face, the slide valve, and the rod that operates the slide valve need a bit of attention. The piston needs repacking. The glands need repacking, both on the piston rod and the valve rod. And then I have to make gaskets for both the steam chest, steam chest cover, as well as both front and rear cylinder covers. The piston was in a bit of a mess. The only thing that saved the cylinder from being scored was the fact that there was some graphited yarn around this piston. You can see the score marks around the edge of the piston, but I think because the cylinder is made from cast brass, this must be harder than the ordinary brass. And thankfully the cylinder avoided the oil starvation very well. Over now to ye old Boxford lathe, and I'm going to fit the piston in the chuck and rotate it while simultaneously cleaning out the groove with a parting tool. Once I started cleaning the groove with the parting tool, I noticed that the groove itself was not in the center of the piston. And the piston rod is not in the center of the piston, but I'm not going to mess about with this because it's the way the engine's been for many years. The idea is not to remanufacture this engine, it's a sympathetic restoration. And I want to use as many of the original parts as possible. At this stage, I made the decision to remachine the groove. So at least it was in the middle in alignment with the piston rod. The original piston is a bit of a rattle fit in the cylinder anyway. I could of course fit a silicone o-ring but I'm not going to do that because if ever that gets run without oil it's not going to last very long. I now have a choice I can use some graphited yarn like this wound around the groove which would be perfectly adequate and this is a piece of old style graphited yarn nothing like the stuff we buy today which I really do not like. Instead, I'm going to use some of this stuff. This is a piece of braided Teflon yarn. First of all, I give it a coating of steam oil, and then I tap the braided yarn into the groove. And once I get all the way round to the end, I cut it to length. Once the piston is in the cylinder, this Teflon coated yarn will seal it perfectly. Fitting the piston into the cylinder, it's actually quite a tight fit. You mustn't do this. Here I'm demonstrating what not to do by using a Stanley knife blade. This is a totally unsuitable tool for the job. Not only will it damage the Teflon coated yarn, it could damage the piston or the cylinder, or you may even cut yourself. You don't need a special tool like a piston ring compressor, just a cable tie like this. Pull the cable tie tight around the graphited yarn, and then using a soft piece of metal, this is a copper tube, tap the piston into place. Simple, cheap and effective, just like a girlfriend I once had. Initially the piston is quite a snug fit in the bore, this is what I need it to be. Now it's time to fasten the piston rod back to the crosshead. When tightening screws, make sure the screwdriver is in the centre of the slot, not like this. This is much better. And the piston rod is re-secured to the crosshead in exactly the same place as it was in the first place. Time now to look at the big end brasses. Before I start this job though, please be aware that this is a brass engine. These are not gunmetal brasses, they're actually made from brass. And brass does not wear very well. It's not suitable for bearing surfaces. Any speculation that this engine is an apprentice piece for powering a small workshop is complete nonsense. It looks to me like an engine supplied by either Bassett Loke or Stevens Model Dockyard that was machined by an amateur in a home workshop many, many years ago. These big end brasses are mainly worn in an end-to-end -end direction. 
I'm rubbing each of the brasses in turn for quite a long time on a piece of 400 grit wet to dry sandpaper using some oil as a lubricant. Some viewers may be thinking, well, how do I know how much metal to remove? I don't know really, I'm just doing what feels right. I've done this many times, sometimes I use my one inch belt sander in severe cases. I think it's one of these things that's down to experience. The more you do something, the better you get at it, well, usually. After removing some metal from each end of the brasses on a piece of wet dry sandpaper, I thoroughly cleaned the parts. The big end brasses are now serviceable. There's still a bit of play that I've left on purpose. Once again, this is a brass engine and I do not want the big end brasses to be too tight in this application. Time now for a bit of gasket making. This is the material I'm going to use. And this is a whole new technique to me. I saw it on John Mills' Double Boost channel where he actually cut the gasket on the end of a cylinder with a ball pane hammer. I don't really want to do that because this is a brass engine. But at least this gentle hammering leaves a perfect imprint of the end of the cylinder on the gasket paper as you can clearly see here. In my videos over the years I've made a great deal of gaskets and I've videoed them so if you're not sure fully how to do this please watch some more videos. I've shortened this sequence but if you watch it you get the idea. Now it's time to refit the end cylinder cover complete with the gasket and here I'm cleaning up the ends of the studs because they were just as they were sawn, very rough. I'm being very careful with this, it's a cutting wheel in my Proxon motor tool. For a while at least, the ends will be shiny, but they'll soon go dull. That's it for this episode, in the next one, I'll be working on other parts of the engine and making it run properly. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.